every single story you read about the end of the world, whether it be The Walking Dead or or these like intricate sci-fi novels, it's never like, well, and then we all came together and we had lots of silos of food. And we, it's always people eating each other and rape and horror and children fucking their dog is their only means to life. And I'm like, just vaporize my ass. I don't want to I don't want it to hit San Francisco and then have hours of wait. I just right on fucking Venice Beach no. and I don't even know what happened and I'm done. Ho for show. All hail the king of the West! The king of the West! The king of the West! Yeah. The king of the West! 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 Maybe not the whole West, but number one podcast in Hermosa Beach. No, fuck yeah. Number one uh, comedy karate podcast in the world. Um... How I'm far with how one. far up the coast do we need to go before we are bested? Can Most, anybody can anybody in El Segundo step to this? I think once we get anywhere near like Los Angeles, <laughs> we're pretty fucked. <laughs> I, was ta- I was taking it small beach town. Oh, right. small beach my town. bad, my bad. Does Pennywise <laughs> have a south. podcast? Go south. If Pennywise doesn't have a podcast, I think we're good. I think yeah. from here to the Mexican border, you're good. Wait, are you out of your goddamn mind? Yeah. Who 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 in like San Diego's Beating you guys, the Nine Club. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, That's, d- yeah, and doesn't uh, actually. I think that I think we're about even. I thought they were in L.A. That's why. I, I'm sorry. I I did think of them, but I thought they oh. were in like north of here. I thought they were. In oh, north of here. I don't know. They don't. Does Ron Burgundy not have a podcast? <laughs> and I'm being serious. I know he does. But he should, not, but he's not really in San Diego. I th- I still think spiritually, he carries. He carries San Diego. Yeah, like, and what? What if like Philip Rivers started a podcast tomorrow or something? I don't know. Be fucked. Yeah. yeah. Am I quiet? Is it just me? No, Mike's really loud. Oh, sorry. I, I've been. People have been complaining about that since I was six years old. <laughs> well, you're very good you, at projecting. Once Mike. you get a little experience speaking into a microphone, Mike, I'm sure you'll fix that. <laughs> I just got to work on it. <laughs> so what's new, Mike? Everything, man. Life is uh life is in a in a whirlwind. For me, it's a maelstrom of exciting stuff. I'm moving to Texas. Does everybody know that? Oh, you're dead. Fucking hell. <laughs> Are we breaking news here? Yeah, pretty much. I, I can't think of holy shit. Many people I've told like on, uh, on like a broadcast capacity. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I'm excited. It's gonna be awesome. I mean, I'm I'm sad too. I mean, I, I there's a lot to miss here. Well, sure. And you have a different relationship to this state in this region than almost every single person I've encountered here mm. in that you're actually from here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So uh, it's not even just like the friends I've made. I, you know, my family and, and my friends that I grew up with that live in all the different parts of Southern California. These are Dodger games. I, that, believe me, I, my dad was asking me on Sunday night, uh, I went out to my parents and, um, He's like, so what are you like? What are you gonna miss most? I was like, well, Dodgers, Lakers for sure, and then he probably wanted you to say him, but <laughs> <laughs> he was hoping, <laughs> wishing. Um, and uh, I said, and, <laughs> let's and see, like, there's bacon wrapped hot dogs, uh, pinks, but you too, Dad. Good, good Jewish deli food because there's plenty of Mexican food. There's actually in Austin, especially, there's plenty of like all ethnic food. I'll be fine. I I have yet to find like a really good solid deli yeah. in Texas. Yeah, the Jews never really established a stronghold in the Lone Star State. <laughs> no, so I'll, I'll miss that. But uh, I, everything will I, everything will even out. I think. You gonna get cowboy hats? Oh, I already have cowboy hats. That's a that's a given. I'm 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 really tempering myself though, so I don't move out there and immediately like wear a uniform. Yeah, <laughs> you know, look like that guy. Yeah, the next time I see you, you, better not look like the Marlboro Man. No, no, you've got the dip going. Yeah, I mean. 
a guy was a uh, uh, a Patreon client of mine. He's like, uh, "Hey, man, I'm so excited you're moving out here." He's he's in Texas. He's like, "A lot of Californians doing it." He's like, "Change your plates immediately because we're fed up with those people." And I was like, "Totally get it." Um, but I'm I'm a little farther ahead than like the average kooky LA person. I was like, "Love hunting, chew tobacco." Uh, you know, I like, I like football and apple pie in America and the military. I'm not, I'm not like this full fledged kind of loopy a-hole that's going to come out there and be like, things need to be my way out here. You know, I, I, I eat almost exclusively meat. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have much problem. Yeah. Your, your cholesterol is probably already at a Texas level. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's great. Sweet. They don't even seem that different to me. <clears throat> you know what? In like, life- I've been to Austin a bunch of times. Yeah. Seem like just down the street except they had to get in a plane well i guess now because you know there's like a bunch of people that live there that are you know fucking quit putting the mask on my face i'm like wow that's a weird thing to bitch about and i'm like oh okay i see the the difference i guess but when i was there it seemed like i didn't see anybody go i'm only eating meat because i shoot shit all the time and where's my dip like it just seemed like a bunch of people were going to the gym and yeah well i don't know how a bunch of girls that didn't dip or shoot I met. I've got friends with several of them. None of, I've never seen any of them hold a rifle, so it's not everybody there. I feel no, like seeing, I don't know how pumped I mean, the rest of Texas is on Austin, though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got to remember, Austin is not representative of the Lone Star State. Oh, right. Uh, it, it, it obviously is. There's elements of it that are very. Well, I mean, pre- Texas proud, but um, you know, East Texas is, I think, a lot different. You know, the the uh, El Paso's Marfa area is. That's so does where that you, mean that most Californians would move to Austin so that they don't get they don't feel too odd? Yeah, and actually, there's a lot of complaint ar- around from Austin old people? school Austinites because because like, California is coming. Well, not only that, but the local government is even switching up. I mean, it's getting a little bit more kind of blue. Well, I think all this kind of misses the point, which is people still talk Wait, about you're blue. You're going there to be red. Uh, got, I am. Do they think that people are going there to make it blue? They I are. Thought, they are. By and large, really. A lot. I of thought the, everyone was moving there because they agreed with what Texas was doing and not with what California was. Doing. I I would have assumed the same thing. I mean, that's certainly you're where saying they're my going there to turn it into California. They want the advantages of being I'm actually Texas. with Texas on this one. They should fuck yeah, off. I agree completely. Like you're moving there to make the government change the position. Well, guys, guys, if I can just interject, I think everybody's stuck in an old paradigm of looking at politics in our country and even the world that no longer makes any sense. We talk about red state, blue state. We talk about north, south. It's it's city and it's rural. Yeah. Jason, you can go to Austin and find people to get along with. You can go to London and find people to go along with. Get along with. I bet you could go to fucking New Delhi if that's still a place and find plenty of people to get along with. I know and go, somebody go, in go, Huntington Beach. It's cool. And go fifty mi- <laughs> and then go fifty miles in any direction outside of the city, and you'll probably find somebody who's the local version of the red state person here. Tito's wife seems like a nice person. Here, here's the thing I found, and I and I mean I don't want to sound weird. corny. I don't want to sound corny about this. But I've had the luxury of meeting a lot of people in a lot of different walks of life. And I've had the uh, immense luxury of being able to travel all over the world. Mm. And I think that the internet, especially the, uh, the proliferation of it too, where everybody has Facebook, Instagram, whatnot, makes things seem much more divided. But if you really take the time to go somewhere and sit down with someone and share a meal... We're like 99% the same. All of us, even mm-hmm. the most extreme trans blue haired snowflake in Berkeley and the most like super right wing military veteran in, in El Paso. If you really actually sat down and like started discussing like, man, I can't believe my daughter's mouthing off to me. It's like, oh, I know. Isn't that annoying? We all really worry and have the same ideals and concerns as we all, I the think same thing. 85% of my gym is um, anti-mask, anti-vax, and they're all my friends. I feel yeah. like everybody in the MMA community, not 99%, 100%. Okay, if I'm there, I guess it's 99. Well, I don't even think it's that. It's 99.9 of a fucking bee's dick thinks that trans people shouldn't be in MMA. I mean, the general consensus of that lady fighting is it's not even the fucking everybody I know. Yeah. Everybody I look up to or look down to doesn't make any difference. Everybody in MMA is 100% behind her and not fighting because they think it's a man beating a woman. And then they keep showing that photo of when he was a man. 
and uh, look at the size of him. His bone structure, like it's all, and I, and to the point where I, I honestly, I've never, nobody, I don't know anybody that thinks that she should fight. I, I, me, I know I am okay with it, and I know that my wife's okay with it, and that's it. So yeah. I might, at this point, I might be wrong. Well, I, I think it's important to because I don't hear one argument on my side when you're when you're disagreeing with someone. Um, and again, I, I think the internet doesn't makes it very hard to do this. But when you're arguing with someone or you have a disagreement, um, it's really important to kind of take into consideration everything he or she has to say, and to they need to allow you to take into consideration everything. Because I don't think I'm sure there's a lot of crossover, but I don't think, for instance, um, someone who is anti-vax mandate is necessarily anti-vax. I don't think someone who is anti-mask mandates are anti-mask. Yeah, I don't. I don't do think this someone who's anti the wood, but yeah. the mandate is for the sake of everybody. It's not that's like you people make it out like you're being forced to do it. It's like no, if you want to work in the community to stop getting us all sick, do the numbers. If you don't have the vaccine, you have more chance of going into hospital, more chance of dying. That's the fucking facts. Yeah, I refuse to believe any YouTube Google cunt that has any other argument. I know in my heart, vaccine. Less chance of dying, less chance of going to hospital, sure. Less chance of actually getting the fucking virus. But you said you said uh, you're a, doing it for the community. The, it's also I, I agree with you completely. That's, like if that's you go to work, and you're in an airplane, you're in a hospital, you should get the vaccine. Right, but wait, wait, that's it. But you you said something totally true. It's a, a, the science backs it up. There's ample and conclusive scientific proof that if you have the vaccine, the chances of you getting serious uh, repercussions from COVID are, are far less. Right, and filling the hospitals and then people that have heart attacks can't get a, a bed because everyone's in there that didn't get the vaccine. But are you Imagine really are person. you really doing something for the community when it's also been proven with ample and conclusive scientific proof that it's not preventing the spread? You know what I'm saying? So the, the yeah, argument just, is, but you is just be, valid. Okay, that, not pre preventing this. What it, I just said, my uh, the hospital. Yeah. If you go to hospital... That's a bunch of money. Not to mention, what if I get in a car crash and you can't fix me because you're all in there because you want your fucking rights? Sure. And yeah, we'll say it with a fucking sarcastic. I don't care anymore. I'm sick of everybody. I if, think if it's for the common good, I don't want to get poked. Yeah. I don't trust the fucking government either. But I'm doing it because I know that it's if it's like all the other things that they've done for us. I like think I I'm not dying from painkiller. Wait, I am dying from painkillers. Whatever. I, I I think. Look, oh my Jason, God, I'm I not fucking fuck this show up so hard. No, 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 no. I don't think you're. Uh, you can erase it. I'm not that guy. Okay, I'm not that I guy. Know, that's but like, I don't am, get vaccinated. I am. Vaccinated. I'm embarrassing myself. But sorry, I, Republicans. You're probably <laughs> right. Fuck trans people. I swear to God, I don't know. I, I think, really don't. Look, I'm not, I have no education. Way. Look at it this way, though. I, I think fuck that there's me. like there's a much bigger middle ground than I think people are willing to look at, and this is the way I look at it. And I just want people to be able to like take the time and, and listen. In that I'm, I listen. Everyone should go get the vaccine. I'm not a guy who's going to go on Instagram and be like, "Do you realize what Pfizer is doing?" I'm not. I'm not by any means that person, but I am genuinely concerned as someone who lived through 9-11 and, and saw when the United States government is provided the gift of having the public scared, they will enforce things that completely go against what this country and the only thing in this fucked up situation that we're in right now, the only thing the United States has as a feather in its cap is the citizens' rights and abilities to make decisions for themselves. And if you saw like after 9-11, we all naturally were like, fucking, this is terrifying. The development of the of the Patriot Act and the NSA. And now, 20 years later, we are seeing such insane, aggressive violations of our privacy, all because we opened that door. And I and I do think that that's a legitimate concern for the pop for the population to say, like, well, I, the mandate of a, of a vaccine uh, on paper makes total sense. But how far will this go? And the slippery slope argument is not something I'm typically behind. But when it comes to the U.S. government, it is definitely a thing. You're and saying it, will, it could potentially escalate from having a vaccine to work to you just they're coming to your house to poke you. Or or if we don't if you don't come by the end of such and such day and, and allow us to put if you give the United States government the rights that a private employer has, that's a really dangerous thing. Because right, no, but you're saying you're worried about the potential of them changing it from if you can't work on the airline or be in the restaurant without the vaccine mm -hmm. to 
if you don't come in and get the vaccine, you will be imprisoned or, no, or, or, inca- or, or, or injected. Incapable of traveling, incapable of having cer- certain jobs, incapable of... But you are, you're not incapable. You just have to get the vaccine and then you can fly. So I don't feel like it's that much of a mandate. It, 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 I mean, it, there's a mandate, but you don't have to get it and they're not going to hold you down and stab you with it. It's just sure. if you want to be a part of the community and the science, I, I still have to believe it, I, that if everybody got the vaccine... We could get a control. We could get a better control on this. There'd be less of it, less hospitals. Anybody gets sick or they're on their way to dying and going to the hospital, mm-hmm. will have a bed. Yeah. Talking mental. about mental. Talking about mental. Talking mental. about mental. We're talking about mental, y'all. Wow, that was a crazy mix of rock and hip hop you guys just did right there. <laughs> but you make a good point. In 2021, talking about mental is finally a thing, and that's why we're excited to be sponsored by BetterHelp online therapy it's a good idea michael that's right you listening to this right now yes you how you doing no how are you really doing yeah. could you use some help there's nothing wrong we all need a helping hand sometimes yeah and if you don't want everybody to know about it or anything this is a very convenient way to achieve this and then if you like it then maybe you could give someone advice and, and recommend they go and do it as well because it does help yep online therapy what could be easier than that you concerned about the cost it's very affordable it's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can get it soon right away if you're bummed out today you could be communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours join the millions of people who are finding out what therapy is really all about maybe it's not what you think it's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset it's not just for you think about your your loved ones your kids do it for the team. Yep. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and the Jason Ellis Show listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Ellis. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash Ellis. I know my listeners. You guys need to go use that promo code. Yeah, I'll check this out. You guys need help. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to you today about Upstart. I think I speak for probably every single person in this room when I say that I know how it feels to be carrying a credit card balance, to have some sort of outstanding debt. And I know that does not feel good. Jason, that's the kind of feeling that pops into your head at like three o'clock in the morning. What am I going to do about my outstanding debts? I don't like being awake at three o'clock in the morning, Michael. That's right. Nobody (laughs) does. And it turns out there's an easier way. Are you concerned about your credit score? Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score. They're expanding access to affordable credit. Are you afraid that the process is going to be too long, too complicated, too cumbersome? No. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 all the way up to $50,000. Dang, that's a lot of cash. That's right. You don't need to carry that credit balance Month after month, you can consolidate it together together into one manageable monthly payment. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Ellis. That's upstart.com slash Ellis. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Yeah. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to Upstart. Dot com slash Ellis. And Mike, what is the, I understand the downside. So people were scared after September 11th and were willing to sacrifice perhaps too much of their privacy right. in the interest of safety. What is the downside that you leave yourself up to in the case of saying, yeah, my doctor tells me that I should get this shot. And so far the, um, the negative interactions seem acceptably minimal. What do I risk by well, submitting to a vaccine mandate? I, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. And I and I, I certainly, like I said, Cause, I'm- Because the risks of, of the whole, you know, giving up your privacy to the government, those were obvious at the time. Yeah. So what is the comparable one now? I think that when you allow the, the federal government to start controlling what you can and can't do, even if it's a t- tied to something that's medically sound. Um, for, for instance- uh, so What about seatbelts? Um- like I the mean, government look, made it mandatory for us to wear seatbelts. And at mm-hmm. one point, I watched a video the other day where there was a bunch of people that were super angry and saying, not on my fucking watch will I be wearing this stupid thing. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's reckless. 
Absolutely, but, but at the same time, but it's a, but it it's might a mandate. If you don't do line. it, you'd, if you don't wear it, you're like if you just kept driving around LA with no seatbelt, you'd eventually go to jail. Let, let me let me give you a, a better, like a more clear cut example. There was a about 10, 15 years ago, um, the mayor of New York was uh, proposing a limit to how much soda you could drink. Mm-hmm. And Lord knows, I've I've devoted a lot of my time to preventing people from drinking soda and being uh, obese and yeah. how much long term well, be, be clear about the the serving size that they could sell. Yeah. They yeah, weren't yeah. they weren't you could go buy two. <laughs> yes, nobody was saying nobody there was no police coming around to beat you if you had three liters of soda. Absolutely. And right. and and I am someone who wants everyone in America to not drink one ounce of soda. But at the same time I was vehemently against the idea of government imposing on on private citizens what they can and can't do because yeah. like i said even if on paper i like i said i'm a pro-vax guy do your thing go everyone let's come together in solidarity and do what's best for the whole right i am i am genuinely scared and i do think that there's legitimate um there's a legitimate um backing to like this feeling that when you provide access to the government that it no it, prior to this did not have mm. Um, it can it can go very south, and history has taught us that. I mean, if you look at what happened after World War II, what happened after you what know, happened? Well, I mean, they rounded up not only Japanese people, Japanese Americans, people born in fucking Pasadena yeah. that were Japanese, yeah. got put in internment camps Is in the United to States George, of America. George Takei mm-hmm. had that right, exactly, yeah. and that was all. That's wildly against what the United States stands for. Everything the but Constitution you're saying that they. They wait. They made a law because of World War Two that allowed them to imprison anybody in. That's they Japanese. Wanted to, yeah. They made. They made a law. Sorry, dude. I don't. Yeah. I'm, I'm a strange. And I they, did, I and the they didn't make one for Germans, by the way. <laughs> so you, they didn't round up German Americans. They rounded up just Japanese, Japanese Americans. Americans. Yeah. yeah. In fairness, the Japanese had attacked they America, had bombed Pearl Harbor, yeah. and granted, like I said, yeah, but you you, you provide the government fear. Amongst the public. Did we vote on that at the time? No, there was no kind of public <laughs> They input. just said, from here on out, we're arresting Japanese Americans? Yeah. And by the way, Jap- at least in Los Angeles, Jap- Japanese America, uh, Japanese had been in America for quite a long time. You oh, can't yeah. tell the story of the founding of Los Angeles without Japan. Little Tokyo is like one of the oldest neighborhoods. Like, I mean, uh, uh. There, there are families where kids were, like I said, born in fucking the valley. And they're like, sorry, Santa Anita racetrack. You're going to a stable. Yeah. And 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 of course, that's a far more extreme situation. I, I provided that. I feel like we were just dumber as a whole back then. You were like attacked by Japan. So now you're like, oh, Japanese people are bad. I remember my baby mama's took her grandfather before he passed away on the, on our wedding night talking to me about, because uh, he was in that war mm-hmm. and he was using a lot of racist slander and yeah. I was like what the fuck is this holy shit this did you know your granddad's fucking crazy yeah oh you know blah 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 and I'm like I think there was a general consensus back then that you could just you hated all Japanese and it wasn't even racist it was just well they tried to kill us so fuck all the Japs and I'm like wow granddad really that's a terrible story and it is awful but it was only 20 years ago after 9-11 where i had a guy he wasn't like my best friend but i knew we were an acquaintance he was turkish born in america and the fucking government came and rounded his ass up just because he appeared Wait, because of the 9-11 thing? yeah you know and you're going to be right he didn't get imprisoned or anything but he yeah, but he still got he had feds talk to that's him like a stuff. black guy i saw a video of a black guy getting pulled over for jogging and the guy's like sorry man you just fit the description and he's fucking straight up jogging like he's just a dude yeah. jogging and they handcuff his ass, take his phone. The, the cop talks nice to him, but you still got fucking handcuffed and put on the curb because you're black. Yeah. Like that's, you know, and then the, and he kept going, kept going. We haven't found the guy. Just sit with me, sit with him. And I'm like, if I'm just some dad jogging and you fucking handcuff me and put me against my rights, you don't have any, like, it's not, it's, I'm not him. And you're just making sure. And you feel like you're, you're entitled to make sh- damn sure for a long period of time. And it is humiliating. It is. Fuck yeah. And then it's like, even if it's like, you know, 20 minutes later, all right, my bad, off you go. It's like, really, dude? Like, you fucking put me on the ground for 20 minutes and you 
did I, and, and I've got like a phone on me and my, I've got running shoes and sweatbands on. Like, yeah. no, this is usually how I burglarize houses, you fuck face. I told you guys recently that happened to an employee of my of my wife. He went out to get like a coffee and he was like holding packages and shit. And all of a sudden downtown LA, there must've been a slow day, which it's not. That's a fucking joke. There's ample crime to be dealing with. It's fucking Gotham City down there. And all of a sudden there were like five cop cars around him on the street. And can you imagine going back to, he'd only been working with her for two or three days. Can you imagine going back and having to explain no. the reason why your coffee break took 45 minutes is because it was a fucking police standoff. And for those of you out there who are formulating in your head, the argument that it's like, well, identifying suspects and race is a, is a huge part of police work. Totally true. The difference is, and I have ample experience with this, unlike most people, when I was living in North Jersey, I was one of like three white people in this town of probably, you know, this is, this is Newark 99, 2000. There was no white people. And I was living there because I didn't know. I didn't know. I was like, oh, seems like cheap rent. Easy access to crack. <laughs> I got stopped by cops once a week because I, I didn't have a car. I was walking a lot of the time. Um, and I got stopped by cops all the time. And they would always say, they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, I actually live. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, don't see a lot of. A lot of people like you around here. And I was like, I get it. I get it. Um, and they, and I told, I'd show them my ID. I told them I go to college here, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, all right, well, have a nice day. I never got handcuffed once. I had drugs on me 100% of the time. 100% of the time I had drugs on me and they were pulling me over or yeah. stopping because of suspicion of buying drugs. Right. That just wouldn't be the same if I was, you know, a black guy. That just wouldn't be the same, you know, uh, the way it was handled. Jason, Tom Brady is yeah. returning to New England for the biggest game of the year. Who you got? Bucks, Pats. He doesn't eat tomatoes, right? That is true. No nightshades. Yeah, I'm going for the other guys. Well, the steaks. Uh, tomatoes have, are cool. I enjoy tomatoes myself. Perhaps it's the reason. Ah, uh, tomatoes, reasons. tomatoes, Michael. Can't we all get along? Right. <laughs> the stakes have never been higher at my bookie. Whether you are backing the Bucks or the Pats this Sunday, the game is always more exciting when you get a little scratch on it at my bookie. Get in on the action and take this game to a whole new level at my bookie. Both games are sporting. Both teams are sporting top defenses. Nobody knows each other. Brady knows Belichick. Belichick knows Brady, a battle on the field, a battle of the mind. Slow and steady will win this race. Bill it's, Belichick. It's Bill Belichick. That's Love exactly Bill. right. You're like an expert over there. Yeah, it's I know. Smart a lot about money football. bets the under, guys. <laughs> Don't wait around. Join my bookie now and bet on the biggest game of the season. Use the promo code Ellis, Ellis. and double your first deposit. Again, that's the promo code Ellis. Ellis to get double your first deposit with my bookie and start your winning season today. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. If you are selling stuff online, you got to use ShipStation. I could have told you that way before we started this podcast. I could have told you that a couple of years ago when Jason and I self-released our own book. Still writing, awesome. Right. Writing the book, not a big deal. Getting the book printed, not a huge deal. Actually taking orders from people and sending it to them, that is. Very, very challenging if you are not using ShipStation. If you're using ShipStation like I do all the time, it's so easy. Presets. You know what we sell? We sell books. When I go in ShipStation, I go, this person, what do they buy? They bought a book. ShipStation goes, oh, right, a book. That's how much it's going to cost to mail a book. I go, yes, thank you. They go, yeah, just click this button and this button. And boom, like magic, out of my home printer, a shipping label that without fail, gets to the person that bought the book in the amount of time they expected to get it. I am a big fan of ShipStation. It makes something that I find very challenging, very frustrating, very easy. Wow. It's like they totally get it. Yep. You like ShipStation, right, Kevin? It's the best. He won't shut up about it. It's never too early to start prepping for the holiday rush, so get a head start with ShipStation. Uh, our listeners can use... Uh, our offer, our offer code, Ellis, E L L I S, get a sixty day free trial just in time for the holidays. That's two months of uh, stress free holiday shipping for free. Just go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top, and enter Ellis Shipstation. Make it ship happen. We don't know what it's like to be a cop.
You know, maybe my yeah. day involved like three or four people trying to pull a fucking handgun out and, my, and, and point it at my fucking face. I'm a little twitchy now. And you know what? All three of them were black. But, and I also, have, you know, do, the day, your life, stresses, you know, just, you're trying to say cops are fucking invincible. No, they probably got the same drama as we do. And then they're, you know, having a bad day. And this guy, you're not sure. Mm. So you're leaning on him a little more than you would usually lean on someone. And yeah, you kind of took a little bit of his dignity away and that makes you feel better about your, you know, it's like a, just keep steamrolling. But yeah. I feel like it happens not just to uh, like ethnicities. It hap- They trip on everybody because they kind of can. They got the gun, you know. But it is it is a little, I get their stresses or not. I'm sorry, I admit that I don't get their stresses. But you can't deny the belittling that is entitled in a police officer. Like you do it to everybody. Yeah. Maybe you don't do it to certain people that you think deserve a little bit more respect, which is fucked up. Because what what did I do? Like if I didn't break the law, but I got a lot of tattoos, don't fucking talk down to me like you're fucking king shit. It's bullshit. And that's happened to me a couple of times. And I, but to me, I'll let it go because I chose to get all this ink on me. Mm-hmm. And I know that because I chose to get all this ink on me, every now and then police officers are going to think that I might be a drug dealer or something. Well, no, and, and, and in certain parts of California, Southern California, you're, you're Aryan Nation. I mean, out in the high desert where I used to go buy meth, wow. you look like, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 it's, I'm sure very insulting and I don't mean it that way, but you look like them. You know, no, bald, I know. I've often tats, you know? thought about like just changing my whole thing and pivoting completely. And obviously, you know, leaving these guys because no one would ever believe that they would turn red. But I was like, you know, that whole gay thing with what's that Milo or whatever, how he Vince thought Mille, he was yeah. gay. Yeah, I'm oh, not, not uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. I'm not gay. I mean, I'm not into any of that. Spray this all black and put like machine guns in the back of it and be like, look, I used to hunt all the time. I'll fucking kill anyone. And enough of this pussy shit. Let's. Let's like freedom. Let's fight. Yeah. See if I can't get like turn it around, because that's my demographic. Maybe like you know Heil Hitler or some shit. Maybe I get like a big like white sup- su- uh, supremacy fan base because they're ready to go. As you said, I look like I'm ready to sell some meth. I think I'm just talking to the wrong people because the gays don't want to hear it. Right. Like if I'm like dick fart, <laughs> am I right? And they're like, oh my god, this guy's such a hedro child i'm not into his show i should be talking about you know i should fl- go back really or it's a tough one you should start doomsday prepping down here <laughs> the walls kind of lend themselves i could put like you got a bit of a, a bit of a bunker vibe what about if i it's just bunkery. stack the walls with water <laughs> yeah just cans because of let's, let's face it that's really like do i really need all the weapons in the world like i don't think it's gonna help if you want to take it, this over you can take it over yeah but in the meantime, you got to stay hydrated. I read a lot of sci-fi books. I love it. I'm not like an addict. I'm a geek for like really classic sci-fi stuff. And a lot of them are based around apocalyptic, apocalyptic, like after the after end the, of the collapse. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And um, from what I gather from this fiction, I don't want to live. Oh. I'd rather the bomb hit like right in I my know. house. Wait, you just, don't want to try Crew Town for a little bit? It doesn't seem fun ever. There's never been a book where it's like, and then there was this idyllic society where it was all flowers. There's well, always about, people eating each other and yeah. shit. And, but what about, you got to, hey, uh, look, I'm not saying the f- initial blast of joining Crew Town is going to be pretty. That's going to be tough because yeah. you're probably going to lose your family. You kinda, you yes. know, you're going to lose everything. And then you're going to turn back to the worst you ever to survive in this town. So yes. it's more like, you're more like um, Snake Plissken, but legit Snake Plissken, not a Hollywood one. You don't have a fucking eye patch. You're just fucking dark and, and you're mean. not as good of a surfer. It, you're definitely not as good <laughs> I'm not surfing out of the earthquake. You know, one of those people was Tony Hawk. Um, <laughs> did know. you know that? That's fucking seriously Birdman on a... F- what's the man-made wave thing? That's They filmed that. Like the surf camp stuff? Yeah, yeah. him and I forgot... I. Th- uh, 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 frizzy surfer guy Machado. Yep, Machado, Machado. and Tony Hawk rode that way <laughs> and and pretended to be uh, Tony Hawk was uh, the long straight haired guy that's like kung fu guy. David Carradine. Yeah, he was David Carradine, and the I'm, other guy was speaking Bob of Machado. Tony on. I TV. could be wrong, but I know the Tony Hawk one's real. Have you speaking of Tony on TV? Have you ever seen? I think it's Charlie's Angels. But have you seen that where he's a little kid skateboarding? What? No. It's a 70s TV show. Oh, the I'm, TV's? Oh, I thought you meant I'm the movie. I'm pretty from sure it's it's 
Charlie's Angels. It oh, could I'm be asking him about maybe that. it's Chips. Maybe it's Chips. But it's a TV show, and Tony's like <laughs> ten. Hey, hey. And they're like, hey, what is that you're doing? He's like, I'm skateboarding. <laughs> so he, yeah. takes- <laughs> he was doing stuff. No one knew what it. He was riding a toy. No one knew what it was. That's how fucking old he is. He's still ripping. Still insanely ripping. Yeah, it's a weird pocket that he's in right now. Uh, I don't think enough people give him when people talk about like, you know, Tom Brady and and Kobe and Jordan and 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 all these people like the goats. I don't think people understand <clears throat> how fucking otherworldly an athlete Kelly Slater and Tony are. Yeah, I, I, I like how. Okay, they can't wrap their head around how fucking insanely I mean, <clears throat> head and shoulders above other people they are. There's other people out there that are lesser uh, uh, fame in, in skateboarding that are doing some remarkable stuff. Like there's a Bucky Lassick and there's a Bob Burnquist and there's an Andy McDonald that I've seen two weeks ago doing shit that we were doing when we were 30. He might Crazy. be better. Like Bob did stuff uh, in some demo the other day where I was like, that's as good as I've seen Bob ride. Bob's yeah. as old as I am, or maybe two years younger, Max. So Bob's like 47, and he's doing like, uh, I mean, I, it doesn't matter because I'll say it and it won't mean anything to you. But he can, you know, he like switched nose grind revert over the fucking giant bridge gap. Like, and it's in a line of, of many, many other tricks, like eggplant. He does egg flips. When he did them back in the day, it was like, God, how can you do that? And now it doesn't look any different. Just looks great. He looks great. He's in Some a mega people- ramp contest the other day doing uh, kick Labindi 360 like fucking 10 feet high or something. Like he's still as good as he ever was. So it's amazing. There's a, but, there, but I feel like there's just judging from me almost being 50, there's a barrier where all of a sudden um, it's pretty cool that you can still do it at 47. But if you can do it at 52, you're a fucking warrior. Yeah. Because there's a big chunk of old that kicks in around there you know it's so funny i feel like in so many ways you know like fucking 40s the new 30 and shit like that for where we are right now it really is true we're just all kind of got the ability if you take care of yourself to get an extra 10 at things that didn't used to be possible because what you just said that used to be pro athletes that most guys tap out around 37 38 the guys who are fucking insane and are genetically even more gifted than their fellow pros and have been like stupid about i haven't had a piece of cake in 15 years they could go till they're 42 yeah you just added 10 years to that look i even even in stuff that's not competitive sports um in 1975 an action star like paul newman and steve mcqueen by that point were already like we better transition into drama because we can't be oh, studs. Yeah. Jason Statham's 54. The Rock's almost 50. And they're still in... I mean, they still got years to be... They can launch franchises. Yeah, to, to kick ass and, and show off their abs and fuck people up. Um, the Rock just, looks like he's about 38. He really does look great. Yeah. Jason Statham doesn't look that much older too. But I feel like Jason Statham, not in a movie, up close... He, he's he's a pretty chewed up face. So well, he probably looks a little. He wasn't there. a young looking guy as right. a young looking guy. Right. I mean, as a young but guy, body wise, yeah, it's amazing. And yeah. his, you know what it is to me, unless uh, it's not real. I know a lot of guys with shredded bodies. I mean, that's the world. I, I just want to put in real quick. He's short, and you know as well. He's as exactly I do, my height. Small. Oh, is he? Yeah, we're I, we are almost exactly the same measurements. Oh, that's not that small. Well, he. But I mean, in comparison to like, if you saw, um, I saw him at lunch one time with Stone Cold. Yeah, it was during this filming of the second uh, Expendables, yeah. and um, it, it looks like it looks like Stone Cold's son. I mean, mm-hmm. and Stone Cold's not like a huge guy; he's mm-hmm. a bigger fella, but he's not. Right. You know, he's not the mountain from Game of Thrones. It does and make it, it easier. It, it looked like he was like Stone Cold's little little mini me, you yeah. know. But I was gonna say it's more so. I know a lot of guys who are shredded, and a lot of guys who were shredded in their fifties and sixties. What impresses me so much about Statham is he moves <laughs> like a gazelle. Yeah, right. At he still got that dancer thing. Yeah, he looks, I mean, he just handles himself like such a young, spry dude. Mike, let me ask you something. You mentioned that you're a big fan of sci-fi and just dy- most sci-fi is dystopian. It predicts mm. not a better, but a worse future. What is the most 
compelling vision of the future that you've come across. I've mentioned many times, I'm not a huge sci-fi guy when I saw Ready Player One. I was like, that's it. The outside world gets shittier and the VR world gets better. And all of a sudden, who cares if my apartment sucks and all my shit is like a shitty version of Ikea. I'm just staring in these goggles all day anyway. Um, The most idyllic vision? No, like the most where you go, oh fuck, that's totally gonna happen. Yeah. Um, I'd have to say there was a short story. I believe it was... Elmore Leonard. I don't remember who wrote it, but there was a short story that came out only uh, like in the 90s called I Have No Mouth and I Need to Scream. And the China, United States, Russia, the superpowers invented this worldwide link up network of advanced intelligence, you know, artificial intelligence that could control everything. The, the, the computer missile systems and things like that. And it was their way to assure that, like, listen, we can't we can't blow up each other. This is crazy. Let's just work together in unison to create bigger markets. Everyone gets better. We can have be a little safe. Eventually, because technology had gotten to the point, the computer's like, fuck these humans. They tell me what to do all day. Destroys all the humans, and then the remaining survivors, it tortures. How does it torture? Because. Like, what's its method? It had gotten to such an advanced level of, uh, of intelligence yeah. technologically that it could actually upload their consciousness and prevent them from killing each other, themselves. So they just have to live for the rest of their lives. And then one guy was like a big, like a, like a orator and he, he took away his mouth. He literally removed his ability to speak. Yeah. And another person was like a model and he made her this fat, disgusting blob and they can't kill themselves and they have no food. He just gives them little like morsels of food and shit. And we're talking 200, 300 years in the future. Yeah. Well, you're reminding me of a news story that I saw just because of Russia and technology. I don't know if you guys saw, there's this husband and wife that I think had been, I guess, running a cryo lab together, and then they had a nasty divorce, Ooh. and one of the bones of contention was, who owns the brains? Oh. And so the wife with a team of goons, and I feel like in Russia, like it's just like uh, like the, wherever the Joker or down to like the docks gets his goons. Like I feel like in Russia, if you need to round up a, like six goons, it's like going to Home Depot to get some day labor. Yeah, right at the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. So they went in and I guess they tripped some sort of security thing. And, and as they get there, the gigantic tanks are dumping nitrogen out and they were able to like recover most of the brains, but the brains were probably jeopardized. These are all people who are Walt Disney and people who died, including the guy who invented this p- particular oh. technology, who were convinced that they were going to uh, come be brought back to life at some point in the future. But the chick got away with an undisclosed amount of brains, and they're tr- not sure which brains she made off with. Oh, no. That's not going to be usable, though, right? It, Nobody's coming back. It depends on who you ask. I'm of the opinion that all of these... You know, it's funny. I, I forgot all about this because Norm MacDonald passed very recently. Somebody reminded me of a conversation that we had with Norm and we were, we were talking to him on the old radio show about Walt Disney passing and how Walt Disney is famously one of these people who froze his brain. And I told Norm my theory that it worked because Walt Disney died thinking he wasn't dying. Yeah. So mission accomplished, despite the fact there was no fucking way they were ever, they were never going to have Walt Disney in a jar is not fucking coming to coming to a theater near you with Snow White two in twenty seventy seven. Could be DNA like Walt Disney. Maybe, maybe that's possible. I'm a I'm a optimist. You guys know that. I'm I'm clone him for sure. Almost to a a fault. And I just read a book called Project Hail Mary, which is a a sci fi book, but it was very uplifting. And I do think that's a possibility. I, I, I don't necessarily think that we are doomed and that as technology grows and as we get more angry at each other and as China and Russia get more powerful and alternatively us, that inevitably there's going to be a nuclear war and we're all fucked. Um, this book was based around the idea that climate change, they identified why climate was changing and it was uh, single cell amoebas that were blurring the sun. And so a conglomerate of the world's best scientists, China, uh, you know, Russia, the different parts of uh, the uh, Scandinavia, they come together, American side, and, and everyone works together to figure out how to scrape or remove this. And, you know, I don't want to give too much away because it's a beautiful book. Um, but there, it was this happy ending, this idea that if <clears throat> I almost think, and I hate to say this, I almost think there needs to be some type of global 
disaster <laughs> to kind of put our asses to the flame. Like the aliens. Maybe. Or, Pandemic's or not enough. Turn it up a little common more. En- common enemy. No. No. Pand- I, I, mean, I mean, like, if we don't... Invisible listen, enemy is not really cool. You need an actual face. If we don't work together, we are collectively fucked. That's and, not happening right now? Oh, no. No. I mean, right. look, listen, I, I, the pandemic's terrible, and it's destroyed a lot of lives. It's not... If we don't fix this, the world end. You know, ninety uh, percent of humanity is going to die. Yeah, it's I not. The, it's not the Black Death, right? If we all died, the world would be doing way better. Possibly. I mean, possibly. There, what about remember when we shut five. everything down and all those weird river the the docking places, the water cleared out and shit. There's been nobody five ship global stuff? disasters to the point of like pressing reset. Oh yeah. I mean. I, Another one's. Con- I mean, it's happened five times. Right. The-, the 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 question is, will we do it to ourselves, or will it just happen naturally? Yeah. I mean, the dinosaurs uh, all died out. They they didn't they didn't fucking uh, have an over reliance on fossil fuels. They were <laughs> fossil fuels. Yes. I mean, if we all got snapped out, if we got like Thanos snapped, yeah. I feel like leaving behind thousands of unmanned nuclear power plants. What would that do? I mean, that would probably be like thousands of Chernobyls, and then. Oh, you mean eventually they would pop. Well, I don't know. Right? Do, the, do the do the not conductors do the do the, of that. the things that power them the, the generators? Rods? Would they continue <laughs> to work, or would they just shut off? I have no idea. Because I think uh, if they just shut off, I, it's safe. I, I he's right though. What if what if there's some massive? I mean, I think we saw with Fukushima. Even if you're running your nuclear power plant very well, if there's some natural disaster that fucks you. That's right. a lot of energy that you don't want. To yeah, like an yeah. earthquake happens around there in a thousand years. Yeah. That could crack it open or something. I mean, we've like right here in Southern California have those concrete nuclear titties yeah. that are like right on the coast. Best surf. That's in right. California. That's everywhere that's, I look. Something reminds me of her. That's one of the funniest <laughs> lines and stupidest lines in any movie. And yeah. I will never pass it without saying it to my wife. Everyone in the car knows it's coming, and I still say it. <laughs> at six years old and at thirty-six years old, I laugh just the same when I see that. Mike, I, don't, for I, I understand the um, <laughs> consciousness uploaded to a virtual torture existence yeah. fear, but I don't understand why you would fear crew town. I mean, you're you're a jacked guy. You've taken lots of, you know, combat training. I feel like you would be the one doing the eating. Yeah, but there's like a, you would be eating me if this turned into crew. There's, town. Do you, did you happen to listen to Quentin Tarantino's interview with Joe Rogan about the Bruce Lee scene? In, He's a fucking hater. In uh, in um, he doesn't. Once upon a time in Hollywood, he doesn't know shit. He just fucking he's peanut butter and jealous because he never could do a fucking spin kick. The, no, I mean I'm sure there's a lot to that, but but what his point was that he made that in a, in a tournament, if there was mats laid down in an octagon, Bruce Lee would trash that guy. But when it comes to who's got something inside them that doesn't quit, that guy had been to war and killed many people. I, yeah, I got muscles and I roll jujitsu and I do lots of Muay Thai. If push came to shove, I'm not gutting a guy yeah, to get are. by. Yeah, you know you what are. I'm saying? Because you're not, you're not putting in the count that you went through before crew town has to become crew town. A bunch of heavy shit is happening. This place gets fucking dusted. Yeah. Your family's gone, dude. You're just a mad man that's alive. And yeah, but you're I, Mike Catherwood. It has your fucking physique and ability. You know how to hunt. You know, you, I bet you got fucking guns in your house. You can start becoming a, a, a guy that it's a, either either you be go either you give up and you just walk out there going, please shoot me. Yeah. Or you go, you know what? I'm fucking everybody up for doing this. I, I just which could happen to you. You could be on a payback mission. Maybe, maybe. I, I like but Mad Max. My point is, and and I think where Kevin misunderstood me is like, if I have the option, I'd just rather not go through it. I'm not saying, yeah. I, I'm not talking what about, about your will I'm to not, want to live. I don't, if my family's already gone or if my daughter's being constantly in threat of being raped and then having to scavenge for food and eating rats and shit, I'd rather we just all die. Yeah, you guys are kind of glossing over the whole, wow. okay, your family's dead bit of it. Have you ever seen that photo of uh, the uh, the family? I don't know what famine it was. And I think like India or something where the guy is guarding his family from cannibals. Oh my God. And the entire family are just like, like, 
Ethiopia on reverse steroids from oh. the famine shit that you used to see. Like, yeah, you just, you're, but also every time I drive down here for the last week or so, they've got some most wanted thing up there. I don't know if any of you passed it today. Mm -hmm. There's some guy, I judge him to be like Mexican or thereabouts. And he's like wanted for every variation on homicide charges you yeah. can Good imagine. Fellow. And the guy, he's just like, got like a double chin. He looks kind of doughy. He looks like he eats a lot of those. What are those like pinwheel fried treats that they sell in? Oh yeah, in, yeah. yeah. Uh, elephant ears. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think he probably likes those a lot. <laughs> But I think that guy murders everybody in this room what? without even without even uh, uh, this no. guy. This guy's evil. Yeah, but he's he, evil. He better have guns. To yeah, kill. no, no, he's gonna have see, guns. Kill see, all four now of us. Start, now you start arcing up. You're not gonna let anybody murder you. No, no, no. He's gonna have guns. I'm not saying he's. I'm gonna, not he's letting gonna beat anybody, anybody murder up. me. I'm gonna die for, in this world. If I have the all uh, the choice of living in Crew Town or just. Of vaporizing with my family and going on to the great beyond i choose great beyond that's my that's my point i'd rather not deal with that it doesn't you mean end it i'd rather every single story you read about the end of the world whether it be the walking dead or or these like intricate sci-fi novels it's never like well and then we all came together and we had lots of silos of food and we, it's always people eating each other and rape and horror and children fucking their dog is their only means to life and i'm like just vaporize my ass i don't want to i don't want it to hit san francisco and then have hours of wait i just right on fucking venice beach no. and i don't even know what happened and i'm done I'm doing all the drugs i'm going to wear somebody else's rib cage and shoulder blade shoulder pads I'm going to eat your face, cut your fucking guts out, and wear it as a necklace. See, when you say it... Let's go. When you say it in that detail, it sounds like something you kind of sort of want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that might be what separates you from the rest of the room. Right. Well, uh, I, I don't really want to do that. I was just trying to riff. Uh, yeah, I... Uh... Right, it's dark, but you just... You can't... Uh, if you're a parent, unfortunately, it's one of the things that comes with it. You think about yeah. what would I do, and it's just sort of like shield the children from the truth and figure out a way to end things as as happily and painlessly and in their case ignorantly as possible right yeah right that's sad yeah did we ever talk about uh speaking of sad do you yeah. want to do droopy's news oh yeah perfect sure let's make this the biggest bummer episode are you ever. having a good day <laughs> well i'm about to ruin it oh, no. this is droopy's bad news uh Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Droopy. Hello, you big old sack of sunshine. Hi, Droopy. Um, you know what? <laughs> what, dog? <laughs> A man in India named Sopan Narsinga Gekwad. Are you guys close? Is it Gekwad? Yes. Man, he got picked on in school for sure. Well, he purchased some land in 1968. Yeah, good time to buy. Afterwards, it became known that the previous owner had already mortgaged it to a bank for a loan. Ah. Uh, the original owner defaulted, and the bank issued the notice unfairly to Gakewad. Oh, what? dude. He took Gakewad's house away? Well, the man appealed, and it went to the Indian Supreme Court, where cool. a series of delays and legal trip-ups... Oh, yeah? Pushed the case for decades. Billion people delays. Yeah. You know, you know, Wait, he didn't get it the whole time he was not living in his house. Well, he he was trying to uh, not pay the the bank fees for those decades for the previous owners. Errors. Oh, yeah. So he gets to yes. stay in the house. Uh, I don't know if it was particularly for his house, but he did buy land. Right. He didn't live on it. It's it was unclear. But Wait, he's so a moisture farmer. The the real horror show here, not just the bank and not the Indian government, the original owner. What a cocksucker. He took that guy's money. He's yeah. like, yeah, here is your land. You can enjoy. And then he, all the while knowing he was fucking defaulting. I, I don't know why he did that to Gakewad. Poor Gakewad. Yes. Poor Raekwon. Well, the Supreme Court uh, finally decided to hear the case in 2021. Uh, just after Gakewad died at the age oh. of 108. Oh, man. He made it to 108. So they were basically waiting for him to die. That was their whole thing. You could make that argument. Go spit. 
It's fucked up. Well, listen to this. The good news is now his children inherit it. They couldn't possibly be older than 80, 85. <laughs> That's a good point. Their whole lives are ahead of them. <laughs> and you know. <laughs> He's only probably got 11 kids, kids. you know, in, in India. Oh, uh, yeah. In rural yeah, they, India. They don't mm. wear a lot of rubbers there, huh? No, that's why uh, billion, billion people. It kind of kills the sensation. Yeah. What about if you want to, like, have sex for a longer time and in, in, in you, you want, like, if you put a jacket on, sometimes you can, like, you know, last way longer. And sometimes that's good for... Rub a little blow on there. <laughs> That's Rub the, a little blow on your penis. Oh yeah, that's the best. To thing. numb your dick oh, off. Go all night. I usually see what I mean. Right. You're built for crew town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little fucking. All gun. of the fun of having sex with condoms <laughs> with none of the birth control or yeah. STD prevention. Oh, you can impregnate everybody in crew town. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you, Droopy, but I, I have to bring this up now. Did we talk about when this product was first unveiled? I think back in 2017. Uh, GIF tip. <laughs> It's what? everything you've ever wanted from a condom and nothing else. It just seals your dick hole shut temporarily. <laughs> oh, man, how's it like, going? Can I burn you? Is it epoxy? I'm what? listening. <laughs> yeah, that's, that usually unseals pretty easily. Oh, no. I'm sorry. What's that noise? Uh, uh, some robot. Right. It's the AI from Mike's future yeah. yes. coming to sew our mouths shut. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one before. A paraplegic man goes on a roller coaster. Oh, I've it's heard ma- that. It's like made stop. for them. I'm joking. Go ahead. Uh, a paraplegic <laughs> man is suing a Utah amusement park after he claims they failed to secure his paralyzed leg properly <gasps> and caused it to hang loose, flail, and become shredded when it got caught in a platform. <gasps> oh no! How shredded? Uh, the the lawsuit claims that the man suffered fractures to his lower leg, two bones in his foot, and that his big toe and ligament was irreparably shredded. That's awful. Does it not work more now? I get that. I Even mean, somebody less. somebody had to say that, and they'd be an absolute bastard, but somebody still had to do it. it. He'll never tap dance again. Really, dude? Is it necessary to keep going on the paraplegic man that has ruined his foot forever? So wait, maybe it's really hard for him to put a fucking shoe on it. Maybe it's all weird and dangly now, and it like hangs out of the side of the chair and gets caught on things. He only had one. So, oh, wait. Right, am I correct? Well, if he's oh, no, paraplegic, he got, or is he a missing arm? Wait, is the other leg working? I thought he fractured legs that had no sensation or use. I do believe the man was paralyzed from the waist down oh, before going dude. on. Dude. Yes. That's yeah. horrible. I've interviewed action sports athletes at the X Games in their like para X Games uh, events. And I met one guy who fully joked about, yeah, I can be way more reckless than the guys whose shit works because what do I care if I break my leg? He's being serious. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's that. And then there's um, if you slam on your head or whatever, whatever's left of your spine goes out and you die because you probably can't take. That's my thing is with people that have spine injuries. Yeah. If you slam with a broken back, that yeah. doesn't mean you're fucking in the clear. <laughs> right, I'm right, safe. Right. I'm yeah. no, I, I think he was talking specifically about the shit right. that already didn't yeah. work. Yeah, but, but he I, wasn't. He wasn't joking. He was being serious. What you're saying, of course, is true too. You're that much more vulnerable because I, you're, I mean, if it's a really bad crash and you've got a broken back that right. never healed, like, how, what about yeah. if your neck oh, fucking is right. joined to that and then it just switches you off? Right. You guys they are, do have that. You remember the guy? It was probably like 20 years ago, who <laughs> he broke his leg. He was on one of those roller coasters where you actually dangle your legs yeah he broke his leg because he decapitated someone who was walking below dude he shattered his leg and <sighs> but he, he made have, their head come off and he sm- he, w- he was going 80 miles an hour not knowing he's just enjoying the roller coaster how could that, All that person he's like, ah! and how could that person be there where how did they get in a I spot where must have gone over like illegally to, to get a, their hat right? or something yeah and, but what a fucking idiot seriously yeah but I saw this, somebody post the other day a surf contest where there was people crossing the, uh, walking the train tracks on uh, uh, San Onofre, like big surf contest. So a bunch of people were going through the, the uh, from the beach through the freeway and using the train tracks to cross a bridge. You can't get off the bridge. <gasps> 
fucking trains that come down there. Some of them are like, uh, I don't know how to say how long they are. I would just say some of them are seven minutes long. As in when it gets there, seven minutes later, the tail comes through. And there was, I, my friend was filming it saying, look at these fucking idiots. And at one point, sure enough, fucking train had to slow down. Amtrak had to fucking slow down for a family to make it off the side as they came by. And no apologies. And then more of them walking. And I, I'm like, this is, these are these are people that have jobs and children. You walked that with your fucking children. It's, it's the craziest demonstration. To think, I could tell. You could tell, that nah, will be okay. They that, might not be, but we'll be okay. I'm like, do you know, like maybe you're a drunk or maybe you're a 17 year old who just doesn't give a fuck. But when you've got a when you when you're a dad or a mom and you've got like a 12 year old behind you with a boogie board under his arm and you're like, yeah, come on. Yeah, your math's got to change. <laughs> Yeah, right. Seriously, though, yeah. that's so concerning to me. It reminds me of poor Kevin's uh, fart on burger story. Yes, like, like very sad. If Kevin told that exact same story, <laughs> and he's like, and the guy who did it was like nineteen, and he sat by himself and laughed right in my face, I'd be like, "All right, Kevin, that sucks, but that's pretty funny." There's the one of those that, guys in every McDonald's. The fact that the guy had like a family, it was like, "Yeah, son, just fucking gassed up a guy's random stranger's burger." Yeah, they were dunking on me. Who that p- poor kid? Hey, no chance. I got a question. Yeah. So I just recently be a, became able to cross my legs okay. like more than I've ever been able to cross my legs. Why? Like, I don't know. So my question is, I've been doing some yoga. I've got like a, a, a movement coach. Then I do a lot of different stretches and exercises to try and uh, even things out. Or is it because I've just become gayer? Because I have become gayer no. than ever lately. No, I think it... Like, you look must have gotten different. I groin, couldn't do that. Groin I've never been able to do this. I'm it's, not it's, about. it's delightful, isn't it? You got better at you tucking can't, your wait, penis. Can you do it? You've you've spoken to me before about how people have spoken to you about why do I cross my legs all gay? Uh, yeah. It's fucking great. You hug your nuts. Yeah, I could never have done that. I don't, and I think it's my hips have loosened yeah. up, and I was like, I wonder if it's from being gay or from yoga. This used to be the manly way. The shit fucking changes. Shit's arbitrary all the time. I don't know if it's really true that pink used to be for boys and blue used to be for girls. You hear that all yeah, the time on the internet. But uh, go find fucking like the rat pack and shit. Yeah. It used to be when they were on talk shows, everybody crossed their legs like this. No, yeah, Man's watch, men. The manliest dudes on uh, on earth would go on Johnny Carson and they'd be like, well, let me tell you something here. I was with my young lady and we were yeah, about yeah, so you doing the one where you can't fully cross it. Well, I can do it, but do I, think, it then. I think this is like the manly way. Right. That's a, but I, I'm saying that I I want to do it where it's comfortable. And yeah. doing this, I, maybe I could have done it for like an origami photo, but it would have hurt. Well, you know, there's also... There's maybe another, my balls got smaller. There's another thing there's room play. to cross my legs. Could that be it? Because I do testosterone. Maybe you just got better at tucking your penis and nutsack down by your taint. Well, I didn't say... I got gayer. I didn't become more trans. There's another thing at play, too. Um, that's... If it, thinking, you could be really even, flexible, oh, I don't understand. You could be really flexible in your hips, but if you have really giant muscular thighs, it gets in the, it gets. In the head. Okay, look, I can't look, do this side though. Frank Sinatra was a man's man, and by all accounts, had a tremendous hog. This is the first picture I was able to find. He has a jacket over his lap, but his his legs are crossed tightly. Uh, That's the way guys used to cross their legs. About, yeah, go, him and at, Sammy Davis Jr. used to hold hands and skip from casino to casino. <laughs> man, I wish I could do. that. Look at pictures of Mad Men. Don Draper. Yeah, there every you go. time and. John Hamm, it's not open for debate, has a fucking monster dick right. to the point that they had to tell him to wear underwear because his dick is too visible. Yeah. So That's right. That's right. And the mustache, the gayest mustache used to be the straightest the mustache. Yeah. And now I guess it's on its way back to being the manliest. When everybody shaves their beards off, trust me, that mustache comes it's back. It's still manly if you're the right guy. Like, for instance, if you took like Don Fry and Freddie Mercury's mustache, they're not both, all that different. They're gay as hell. But both of them. Tell that to Don Fry. No problem. <laughs> you, think, you think I'm fucking scared of Don Fry? Um, I'm not. It's no. not 1991, dude. It's fucking right now where he can't even get out of a chair. No offense to Don Fry, you're a legend, but I would kick your fucking ass. No, I don't think you're scared of Don Fry. But there, are we in any way questioning his manliness? No, no. He's, he's one the of the manliest. manliest. Right. He's one of the man. Well, okay. Is gay sex not that? That's like it takes away. Let's say Don Fry has been taking it. For the last 20 years. Yes. Does that make him less manly? No. Right. Like, I feel like Don Fry's earned his manlyhood from the displays of of uh, of 
of power and men yeah. and like pain, facing pain, agony, the amount of fights he had with all those injuries and and some of the fights he's had are like legendary. But his head, I mean, Katie knows more about the gay scene than I do. His head, he's Tom of Finland. He's a fucking, him in his prime was the ultimate gay porn star. Like yeah. all gay guys that would, that are into gay porn would love to see Don Fry get fucked. No, that, that like, East, that like village, you know, uh, San Francisco yeah, the, 1970s right. gay guy. That was the, that was the look. That's yeah, the I'm village saying. people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He looks like he could be in the village people. If MMA like, had been popular in 1977, there would have been an MMA fighter in the village people. And it would have been Don Fry. Who would have looked like Don I think Fry. But a lot of that's just cultural. I don't think it has anything to do with manly because like, that, like the, the lesbian scene. The thickness of it and yeah. the down, it, it's a very, uh, what are the guys called, baby? Leather Daddy? Yeah, it's yeah. a Leather Daddy. He's a le- Look, there's photos of him that aren't him in gay bars. Like where yeah. I see where they make big murals of like, you know, the extreme what a gay guy would be. If someone said, yeah, no, I painted that after Don Fry, I'd be like, yeah, it looks just like him. You're saying um, it, w- it would make sense if Don Fry joined Turbo Negro. <laughs> Wait, I don't yes. get that. Yes. I don't think he joined Turbo Negro just because Negro's in the band. In the name. Wow. Oh. <laughs> We're very lucky that Don Fry is not very fast anymore because he would fucking kill both of us. Oh, dude, crush my head. But, yeah. um, you know, the, the the gay community, for a long time, they adopted the most butch yeah. things. And, uh, you know, well, they it, still do. They're it, still big yeah. jack dudes with those mustaches hanging out with all the leather on. To me, they almost look racist. Like some of them have got the leather jacket with the fucking. The the Nazi looking hat, like it's not a, it's not a, it's fucking no, it, close. it's like a captain's hat, yeah, right. You know, it's kind of close, hat. and it's a big dude with te- big white dude with tattoos, and you're like, you 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 look like a half dressed Nazi. You know what I mean? Like if you just had another a shirt on, and you and you didn't have ass chaps, <laughs> like if your chaps had an ass, you'd just be a biker. Yeah, you know they they seem super. Um, super butch. That's the gay community, male gay community. It represents one of my weird, I don't want to say discrimination, but prejudice in that I grew up in a world where it wasn't crazy to be around gay men. So when I got to be like 19 or 20 and you would look at like late nineties culture, um, on TV, they'd, they would portray gay men all the time. It was like, hi. And you know, it was like eh. this, and every gay guy I ever knew was jacked out of his mind with fucking veins coming out of his neck. Like, huh. I, I was like, hmm, I, that's not, that's not the culture I knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was always like these monster Brock Lesnar dudes. Yeah. Well, they all come in different shapes and sizes. Oh, sure, Just sure, like sure. us. In the time that remains to us, uh, do we have any more droopy stuff? Yeah, well, let's you go. Be, you Fuck a yes, time. They can suck my butt. Um, recently, a chef was cooking a gigantic vat of chicken noodle soup for a wedding. Sick. Um, The soup was served for hundreds of guests and was reportedly delicious, and he was dubbed the king of soup. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm just kidding. He fell in a gigantic vat of soup and got cooked and died. Oh! Wait. How big was the fucking bowl? His whole body fell in? Oh, yes. What kind of stirring technique are you using to fucking fall all the way into a bowl of soup? (laughs) (laughs) Is he like the Joker? Remember when Jack Nicholson (laughs) fell in the body? Yeah, was he stirring it with his mouth and he has no arms? It was a gigantic uh, spoon with a very short handle. So to lean in to stir it. That would be my guess. What? And, and then he, he could he doesn't know how to swim, or the it was so boiling that it it ended. was boiling hot and just cooked him. What Eastern Bloc country was this? I believe it was Iraq. Oh, yeah, or Iran. S- in the same neck of the woods. Did they use that soup? Waste not want. Oh, <laughs> what <laughs> is that cannibalism? It's not. Yeah. If I'm saying get his body out. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure they just got a big net and fished him out right, of there. Right, so we use his oh, yeah. juices that he marinated in there yeah. in the soup. I'm, I'm with you. I he, mean, he was delicious. Yeah. The wedding Fell was right awesome. off the bone. Oh. <laughs> Talk about, that's organic bone broth. Look at that. Oh. In other news, yeah. um, do you know who the rapper KTS Dre is? Yeah. No. No. 
uh, he came into a bit of legal trouble after yeah. getting busted on a weapon charge and That's resisting gangsta. arrest. Good. Respect. Uh, yes, he, he managed to post bail and was fitted with an ankle monitor. That's gangster too. And released from jail. Yeah. All right. Uh, while he was walking to his car from jail, he was ambushed and shot 64 times. Oh, my God. So you're saying. 64? Did, uh, did yeah. had, is he alive? He died. Oh, no. Uh, That's yeah. like Robocop. Which shot do you think took him out? Like the 64th one or? um, Probably the first. I would I would imagine so, right. but uh, the you important know, thing is make we'll, sure. we'll always have the music, right? No, his, his music will live on. Good yes. point, Michael. Dude, yeah. sixty-four times. Holy mackerel! You know he's an asshole, right? There's no way he's completely innocent. Sixty-four no. times tells me that he did something very, very bad. He harmed a child or something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. like I killed you, and then I shot. I got to reload a lot. Sixty-four. I don't know many magazines that hold 64 bullets. Yeah. I'm trying to think. It's a lot of gunmen. That sounds like yeah. when you're Is a kid. Is a handgun or a machine like, gun? Like when you're peeing on snow and you're trying to see just how much you can melt. It seems like <laughs> right. somebody is trying to see just how much he could get shot. Or he's right. really tough. <laughs> and they've shot him before. Right. He and just they're like, kept, this time, fuckers. <laughs> he's the Rasputin of gangster rap. <laughs> yeah. And it was just kept, a, He just kept coming. It's a suburban or a panel van of like 11 guys. And they're just like, <laughs> fucking right. shoot. And he's right. in <laughs> a full sprint. The camera, does the, the camera didn't show because they cleared the bodies. But he actually killed 75 people before he finally went down on the 64th. <laughs> Shot. Uh, yeah. They found uh, three fully chewed bullets in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of and half a person's face. It's like the end of Scarface. Yeah. Uh he'll be missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But not by his ambushers. No, no, they'll be pretty pumped. They're probably fucking popping bottles right now. Uh, a man in North Carolina was selling his 2020 Stingray Corvette. Nice. Uh, but decided to take it out for one last hurrah. Oh, no. You never do that. It's no. like skateboarding. You say, I'll just have one more ride. Right. Nobody says that in skateboarding. The assassin. You can't, you can't say that. The assassin who has one more job. Just one yeah. more job. One more bank robbery. Yeah. <laughs> he died, didn't he? Well, the man pulled out onto Highway 11 oh, and decided to gun it, but he lost control of the car. Let's do that. Ran it off the road and flipped it into a ditch. But he's okay. He, the man did somehow survive nice. with minimal injuries, but it's safe to say that the sale of the stingray is off. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. now it's his for life. He gets to keep it forever now. Yeah, he gets to uh, keep that uh, hung, hung, twisted piece of metal. Yep. Yeah. He can go visit the cube whenever he wants. Hopefully he has insurance. Fingers crossed. Or life insurance if he has a family. Yeah. More importantly. Eh, I mean, he made it. In other news... A young man and woman in India were getting married in front of their families and many friends. Yeah. But uh, trouble struck um, when the ceremony started and the bride collapsed, had a heart attack, and died. Oh, my God. Did anybody else die when she died? No. Indians Um, like to die in groups. (laughs) (laughs) Normally, this would put a damper on a wedding. Oh, they partied. He married you know, somebody else the same the, day. When the bride dies. but uh, the, fucked her sister. The family of the bride-to-be's quick thinking led them to sub in the late bride's sister. Boom. Yeah! Fucking boom. And the beautiful day continued. Problem solved. There you go, everybody. You not true. That's how you do it I mean, there. really, what's important is, was the sister hotter? <laughs> I, I think he did upgrade. Yeah. Oh, so after, he probably, after allowing uh, an adequate cigarette break for everyone to grieve. Yeah. If if the sister that he married was substantially younger and hotter, I'd he killed her. Be looking at him yeah. as a suspect. He does. He does so with heart attack <laughs> medicine for sure. He's like, I got a plan. The brother of the bride said that it was a little weird watching his sister get married while his other other sister was dead in the next room. Oh my god. But regardless, uh, congratulations to the happy couple. How long was he supposed to wait? Yeah, and how much money does everybody have to make another wedding? Life is for the living. That's right. Let's just get this done. Look, she's dead. She doesn't know. She would want this to happen. Not right now. She would probably prefer that we wait a year, but the most important part of this is she would want this to happen. You know how the, the old figure of speech, it's truth is stranger than fiction. You guys have both had experience writing. You even with 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 screenplays. If you wrote that, right? Anyone would read that and be like, "Shut the! All right, listen. You're getting this is fucking crazy. This is crazy for an Adam Sandler movie. There's no way anyone would ever fucking do that in the world." It's probably hot. 
get to fuck her, right? Like straight away. That's the best part of marrying chicks, I'm in my not, experience. Is that fully bad? familiar like with Indian culture? But you're I'm gonna pretty marry, sure you fuck your wife. You're yeah. gonna marry somebody, and then she died, and then you fucked her sister that night. <laughs> Jesus! Like when you jizzed in her sister, your girlfriend of many years died today. Well, that's the one thing you're forgetting in this. Oh, he there's, doesn't even know. That there's bitch. a very, very good chance this was an arranged marriage uh, to begin with. Uh, of course, so it was. they weren't close. Oh, so he was like tomatoes, tomatoes. Right. I was going to come in somebody today, and now it turns he, out... He probably literally was. He probably was like, uh, I, it sucks for you, but... Mm. Pretty lucky for him when you think about it, because he would have just been... Um, uh, what is it when your wife dies? A, a widow? widower. Yeah, huh? a widower, and then he's like legally married to a fucking dead person. It's going to take a lot of legalities to get uh, out of that and get your your next wife. Now he just has one less sister-in-law coming to visit yeah. him. Yeah, that was a close one, really. Because you don't want to marry someone that's going to die in the next couple of days. No, right? Unless you hate her. No, that's bad luck. Yeah. Or she's really rich. Right. Then that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get all her money. <laughs> you only had to be married for a couple of days. And you only had to know her for a couple of days. And you didn't even know her anyway. Yeah. You just got a bunch of free money. I'm okay with that. Yeah. It's been a tough time uh, for the Rolling Stones recently. Yeah, that guy died, right? Yeah, their drummer, Charlie Watts, died at 80 years old. Didn't look yeah. a day over 90. And now they're tour manager had to bury his dog oh uh, quite really sorry i love dogs but does that really count and well, what we're talking about here we're talking about the drummer of the rolling stones and you're saying their roadies fucking dog died like no shit a lot of they're fucking eight they're all 80 bunch of their fucking dogs died so it happens when you're here for a hundred years the dog was uh 14 years old and suffering from health problems and uh when the dog passed the tour manager quite literally was going to bury the dog he dug a hole in the backyard and began digging the grave, uh, but the hole collapsed in on him and killed him instantly. <gasps> How big was the fucking hole? That they killed the manager? How big was the dog? Yes. <gasps> oh, my God. I mean, how big of a hole do you need to bury a dog? Mm, I think what the real question is, how old and feeble was this guy? Wait a minute. How old and feeble can you be if you dig a hole big enough to fucking bury yourself in it? That's a you damn dug a hole. Point. Have you ever dug it's a? I've so dug holes hard. before. Yeah, dude. I would think if you're strong enough to build a hole that you could die in, you would also be strong enough to, to get, get out of out. it. Yeah. I'm gonna say the dog killed if him. If he's old enough to be the Rolling Stones manager, and if he's the Rolling Stones manager, he's yeah, yeah. so rich he did not dig that hole himself, and he got in after some other dude, some you know in England, some probably some day laborer came in, eleven of them dug a giant hole. And he went down there. He's like, hey, most sweet dog. I love, I'll always love you. Ah! And then it fell in on him. And all those guys had left. Maybe. I need some privacy. I saw the story as well. I believe he, I believe he, I think he wanted to do it because I'm not even sure the dog I had passed it. yet. I think, yeah, he was part of his like a ritualistic making. Wait, he died before the dog did? I think by a couple days. If I'm not, I may have misread it. You idiot. The dog has since passed. He was right. The have dog. to dig a hole that deep to bury somebody. Unless it was not a dog. Cujo. Yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds like he did a human hole. <laughs> Maybe he was disposing uh, of some bodies. It sounds like he did a fucking elephant hole. Like, I mean, to yeah, collapse in on you to right. the point that you literally can't get out? Like the dog, I thought you said I was digging this for Charlie. Uh, I sw <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a big hole either, by the way. He was oh, like Mr. Burns. Man. <laughs> I mean, if you're a Rolling Stone, you got to bury them pretty deep. You don't want them getting dug up. But a dog, he could get dug up. Yeah. Two feet, a three dog. feet max. My, and you don't want to do it so wide that you're w down there walking around. It's just a dog. He's a little ball. My St. Bernard dug up my uh, dead hamster like a week ago. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah. What do you do with it? No, I just, just like, I'm... To the backyard having fun digging hole i'm a puppy saint bernard he's fucking huge she's yeah. huge and uh i was going out because we're moving i'm cleaning the backyard getting everything all organized and I look over and there's just like just like little teeny bits of meat with like bones and i'm like oh fuck yeah. i'm like that's lily oh. oh thanks gloria appreciate it fucking my dog one of my dogs ate we got uh doves in the backyard that are breeding making a lot of little doves and every now and then a little dove falls off the because it's a heater thing in the mm -hmm. backyard and they fall off and katie puts them back up there but i guess they had even more like another round of small doves and uh when we got back from somewhere let the dogs out the back 
and Romeo, the little chihuahua I rescued, I guess there was a dove that fell on the ground and he just went over there and fucked it up. So Katie went out there and he'd already like pretty much disposed of the yeah. entire thing. And little chihuahua was like, I'm like, man, you're a full on murderer. Cause you seem pretty friendly and timid, quite frankly. But it's did, interesting did you, to see when you got somebody who's under your weight class, you do not play at all. Do you know what it sounds like when the dove cries? Fair enough. I know. <laughs> that, I, is just, that, does, is, that is just like a white wing dove though, isn't it? You got any more drippy before I kill myself? <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jason, yes, I do. Okay. A 30-year-old man, a 39-year-old man, excuse me, in Spain disappeared, and his family reported him missing. Uh, shortly after filing the report, his body was found wedged in a giant dinosaur statue. Uh, police in the area noticed a strange smell and spotted his legs sticking up out of the statue. <gasps> So they, they came over and looked at it, and uh, the man became lodged in the statue head first when he dropped his cell phone in there and oh! tried to get it out. Oh, I thought you were going to say he had a dinosaur fetish, so this is better than what I was imagining. I thought somebody killed him and put him in there to make a funny joke about, <clears throat> look at this dinosaur eating a guy. I think the real story's worse. That That's a torturous death. Because he starved. He just lied there and died for a long time. Yeah, still ever so slightly better than the chimney guys. Yeah, because you probably go crazy before you die. Dying in a chimney is yeah. on my short list of play, ways I really do not want to go. Is anyone fair. out there thinking of ending me? Forget I said that. Right. Don't go in chimneys, though. Then I there's mean, that. And sometimes it's best to just leave the cell phone where it is. You can buy a new one. And finally today, uh, a rapper in Brazil named MC Kevin. Carajo was having the time of his life in MC his hotel Kevin? room. Uh, that's right. I can't believe that one was still on the table. <laughs> Especially <but>. in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's on it's the like, table. It's like MC Hanau. Yeah. Uh, he was having the time of his life in his hotel room one night, having a, a threesome yeah. with, with his buddy Victor and a model named Bianca Dominguez. Uh -oh. All right. Their I'm in, by the way. Their romp, however, was interrupted by a knock at the door, and MC Kevin, fearing that it was his new bride of three weeks, oh, shit. headed to the balcony to hide from her um, it, <laughs> when he attempted to jump onto a terrace below, but unfortunately he missed, and he fell five stories going splat on the concrete next to the pool. Did he die? Oh, he died. <laughs> right. But he had a threesome first, right? Five stories yes. the concrete. Well, actually, some people could make it. He actually ping You could make it. He hit a couple of balconies and flipped over. Oh, and, uh, that'll do it. Bing bong, bing bong, splat. Yeah, yeah bing bong before a splat throws you off. You're probably mm. not going to land on your feet like a cat after mm. some bing bongs. Yeah. Speaking of hitting the post, we're going to be doing that with Mike Catherwood on a Patreon show that we're yeah. going to tape if people want more of where this episode's coming from. Yeah, that's going to be great. Patreon.com slash LSMe. Does that mean I have to go? It's not a bad idea. All right, everybody. See you next week. Don't die. Wait, wrong button. Boing, 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 boing. Meow, 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 meow. If you want more Jason Ellis show, sign up for their Patreon at patreon.com slash ellismate for a two-hour show every Tuesday and Wednesday. To watch full episodes of the Jason Ellis show, subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Jason Ellis show. And don't forget to follow the crew on Instagram at Wolfmate, at Tollywood, at Kevin Craft, at Underwear Wolf, and at The Jason Ellis Show. Big bad boy. Boy, 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 boy,